you if you're gonna have a change of light, you gotta do it right now. I'm gonna give you just 30 seconds. Now come on, change. It's Sunday morning on CBS. And here again is Anthony Mason. All in the Family was a huge hit for Norman Lear. King Lear, you could call him, considering the respect that he enjoys in the world of entertainment. Bill Whitaker now with a Sunday profile. There's got to be a story behind the hat. Norman Lear's wife bought him his signature hat to keep him from scratching his head while he writes. But he's a man who has worn many hats over the years. TV, movie, and music producer, political activist, family man. At 86, you'd assume he's done it all. But ask Norman Lear, he's only just begun. So there's no slowing down? No, there's no slowing down. Why not? I mean, you've earned the right to say, you know, I'm going to sit back and watch all these things come to fruition. And I've earned the right to do what I want to do is another way of saying what you just said. And what I want to do is wake up every morning of my life to do something that I think matters. And what matters these days is family, married three times, he has six children and four grandchildren, and music. I have an enormous passion for the music. You can't have 14-year-old daughters and not have passion for music. He bought into the Concord Record Company 10 years ago, and today his greatest passion, playing for change. Stand by me. Little known street musicians recorded separately around the world brought together in song. And the land is dark, and that moon. It's had 12 million hits on the internet. I've never shown that, and we've shown it to a lot of people where they haven't been emotionally connected. I fell down. There have been club dates, now a CD, the profits to help build schools for music in the third world. Norman Lear wants nothing less than to inspire, no, change the world through music. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Lear has been changing our world for decades. Back in 1971, he gave us his insurgent little sitcom, All in the Family. The language was shocking. Now, let me tell you something. If your spicks in your spades want their rightful share of the American dream, let them get out there and hustle for it just like I do. The topics, racism, rape, homosexuality, miscarriage, never seen on TV before, all spinning around the unapologetically politically incorrect working-class blowhard bigot next door, Archie Bunker. I didn't have no million people out there marching and protesting to get me my job. No, his uncle got it for him. It was the number one show for five straight years. What made you think that bigotry could be funny? It wasn't the bigotry per se, it was the state of the man's mind. He was afraid of tomorrow, he was afraid of uh, anything new. Lear took our anxiety at the social upheaval at the time, Vietnam, the women's movement, civil rights, and invited us to face it with a laugh. Vivian, I'm pregnant. Always pushing our buttons, always pushing the envelope. Just tell me, Walter, that I'm doing the right thing, not having the baby. Maud and All in the Family were two of seven hit shows Lear had on the air in the mid-70s, all to be re-released on DVD this week in a new collection of the first seasons. There were Sanford and Son, Good Times, The Jeffersons, One Day at a Time, and the late night soap opera spoof, There can't be a waxy yellow buildup. Read the can. He was probably the hardest working man in show business, running from one taping to the next. My name is Norman Lear. He even did the warm up acts. You know, I have some questions before we were. Yes, ma'am. What happened to Mary Hartman last night? I didn't get to see her. <laughs> it paid off 
Some weeks, four of the top five shows were Lear's. Did you plan to topple old taboos when you put these shows on the air? There weren't taboos to me. You could hear anything we were saying on a, you know, in a schoolyard. What was the big surprise? I think the big surprise was that you put it on TV. OK. First okay. one to do it. I fess up. <laughs> For him to say that he didn't have an impact on not only television but society is, uh, you know, it is a little too humble. Rob Reiner is best known now as a director, oh, no. but he got his show business break when Lear tapped him to play Archie's foil, Michael Stivic. You're a lot more ignorant than I thought. <laughs> Lear produced Reiner's first string of hit movies and remains a friend and mentor. Sticks and stones may break my world, but you are one dumb polar. We were a, a nation of 200 million people, and we were drawing 45 million people to watch our show every week. Now we're a nation of over 300 million, and if you get 15, 20, 25 million, you're a massive hit. He was uh, the king of television at the time when television was more important, or at least more viewed than it is now even. But in 1980, the king turned his back on his TV empire. He grew alarmed as evangelical Christian preachers grew more visibly and vocally involved in politics with views and tactics he found divisive. He responded the way he knew best, on TV. So maybe there's something wrong when people, even preachers, suggest that other people are good Christians or bad Christians, depending on their political views. His ad spawned People for the American Way, his grassroots civics organization to keep Americans aware and protective of their rights. What is it about the approach of the religious right that so rankles you? Politics and religion are not the American way. My contention is every individual's compact with God, with that, is different from every other individual's. So don't come to me with your compact and insist it must be mine. America's open to all of them. Keep it out As like proof, it. he turns to the original to document. I never know whether I'm going to cry or just tear up or... He bought one of 25 remaining original printings of the Declaration of Independence for $8.1 million. That's our birth certificate, the country's birth certificate, and I never, I never look at it when I don't think of that. All men created equal, endowed by their creator, the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. I mean, come on. <laughs> Awesome. And just like this was used in 1776, he takes it around the country for as many Americans as possible to see and read. The last thing I thought I'd seen class today. It's not easy to top you, Norman. Buying the Declaration spawned Declare Yourself, a Lear organization that has registered more than four million young voters in red states and blue since 2004. It is about a rebirth of citizenship. And while his own politics are decidedly liberal, he preaches that democracy only truly works when everyone is involved. His latest endeavor, Born Again American. I'm a born again American. Using song to urge Americans to get off the sidelines and get engaged in civic life. This is bipartisan? It's totally bipartisan. I think of myself, by the way, as a bleeding heart conservative. You will not mess with my Bill of Rights. He defends everyone's rights, those like him who support President Obama. Well, Barack, you know, who, who could have guessed five years ago we were going to have an African American as a president. And those I'm, who don't. What would Archie Bunker say? Boy, I've thought about that. You know, I, I think he'd find some way of saying the guy isn't really black. <laughs> He's <laughs> half black. That's a big difference. And you don't know if that ain't the biggest half. <laughs> but you know. that's looking backwards. 
You know, I'm occupied with now and next. I want to matter every day. That brings me great pleasure. Thank you, thank you.